Hello and welcome to French Chic's Top Tip Videos. I'm Craig Phillips, the brand ambassador. In this video, I'm going to show you the basic tips on how to paint a piece of furniture. I've already done the preparation on this, so you can watch that on another video on French Chic TV, the YouTube channel. All I had to do was clean it up with a sugar soap, dry it off, sand it down, make sure it's dry and dust free, and then you're ready to start painting. Now the paint I'm going to use is the Lazy Range from French Chic. I'm going to apply that on two different methods. One with a paintbrush and the other bit with a roller. Give the tin a little shake up first, take the lid off it and you're ready to start applying the paint. What I'd always advise on a piece of furniture like this, take off any drawers and bits and pieces out of it because you can paint them separately and turn the item over. So what you want to do is paint the legs first. So I'm going to start doing the legs with the actual brush. I'm going to get not too much paint on the brush, just about this much. And I'm going to start right at the top and I'm going to work my way down, going with the grain of the wood. What you'll find is when you're starting to use any of the French Chic range of paints, firstly they don't have no smell whatsoever, which is brilliant. They're so easy and enjoyable to apply. And as you can see, once I've put the paint on the brush, because we've got a long item like this, the leg of course, apply the paint on first and then get your brush and kind of finish one nice stroke, just gently and lightly. You're not actually adding any more paint onto it, but you're not taking any paint off either. You're making sure you're applying an even balanced coat right the way around the leg. Because I'm using a very light color, which is called hot as mustard, going onto a dark hardwood surface, you still might be able to see a little bit of the existing colour coming through, but don't worry about that because the paint will dry flat and of course you can easily apply a second coat if needed. So that's the first two legs painted in literally a couple of seconds and what you'd be pleasantly surprised with, how far the paint goes as well. What I'm going to do now just show you a little techniques of what to avoid, what not to do. Firstly, getting too much paint on your brush, it's going to start to drip, etc. And then when you apply that onto the surface, whatever the surface is, large or small, if you're applying on too much paint, then you've got to apply a different amount of pressures to drag that. You're also going to get runs on there. Of course, it's a leg sticking up and down, so naturally you want to start painting up and down. You don't start painting these from left to right, because as you're doing that, you can probably see that side, the paint on there, the excess paint that you don't want, is now catching that lip on the corner and of course will drip down. You'll find yourself keep going around and around, it will become unenjoyable. So I'm just going to whip all that straight off and get rid of all them drips on there. So again, I'm applying it on like this, up and down, until I feel I've got just the right amount of paint on that leg. And then clear off any excess paint that's on there and one nice stroke just nice and gently from top to bottom right across that leg perfect and that's right amount of paint what we want for, certainly for that first coat now another great benefit of using all French cheeks paint is they don't need any priming on them whatsoever. This particular Lazy Range one has an infusion of wax already built into it. So once it's dried, it's gonna be a lot more durable. You can wipe it down and it doesn't need any sealing. Okay, that's my four legs now complete. I'm now going to paint around this rim, going all the way around here. But the nature of this particular item, if we look closely around here, you can see it's got a kind of a routed out groove in there. Just gets set in, so I'm only going to paint down to that line itself. If it didn't have that line in, what I'd be tending to do now is prop it up just on a couple of little battens to raise it off the actual tabletop, and then I'd paint right the way down then to the corner or the edge on here. 
So again, just applying a small amount of paint on there, along that edge. I'm also going to paint the underside of this edge here, which is always advisable. Of course, you're not quite going to see that, but it will give you a better edge going around the corner of here. I'm just going to kind of feather it across, going with the grain of the wood like that. But as you can see, I'm lapping over onto the legs I did a moment ago. So then, and to get to that point, I then take the edge of the brush with hardly any paint on, and I just take it up across that leg there. And same again then on the opposite side. Nice and gently, hardly any paint on there. And I'm just smoothing that across making sure I'm not applying too much paint now on this area and on here. That's the first coat now complete. We're gonna let this dry and apply a second coat. It's now ready for the second coat after about an hour of drying. So again, using the same brush, I'm gonna apply it on using the same method as the first coat. You can see when I apply the second coat, all of a sudden the colour becomes solid on there and that's because I've left it to dry for so just a little over an hour and it's perfect. So it's important, do let that first coat dry out nice and then apply the second. Drying times can vary if you're applying it indoors or outdoors and also the temperatures can play a part in the drying times and the different seasons. After finishing the second coat, I also left that for another hour to completely dry. I'm ready to start painting the top. So I'm going to lift this down onto the floor. And I'm going to now apply the paint using a small roller. I'll we'll just put a small amount in the tray and then pop the roller in. Roll that up and down to completely cover the actual roller itself. And I'm going to start off right in the centre. It's only a small area, of course. And then I'm going to start to equally spread that paint. And that way I know I'm not putting too much on. Again, not putting too much pressure on it because the roller could tend to skid on the wet paint, which you don't want that happening. Taking it right the way to the edges. Now, because this is a flat, smooth surface along the top, it's quicker and easier to apply it with a roller than actually a paintbrush. I'm going to go over this and level this out a little bit more in a moment, but I'm going to go around the sides first. It's not a problem if you do get any onto the actual side because again, just feathering that out with your brush, it will dry nice and flat. Also another little tip when you're using the roller on here, what we don't want to do is start the actual end of the roller along here and catch that lip. So we're starting in the centre and we're spreading the paint out like this. do not matter really which way we do. When we're coming to one of them edges, we want to come off it that way. That now looks like I've got an equal amount of paint spread all the way over the top. Just like the legs, I'm going to leave this to dry for at least an hour and then I'm going to apply the second coat. Now the top has had its second coat and also had the hour to dry. I'm going to put the drawer back into position. I did apply a small piece of masking tape just on the edge there to cut me a nice straight lining when I painted those edges. So it's dry enough to slide into the area nice and smoothly. 
and that's how quick and easy it is to paint a piece of furniture with French Heat Paint using a paintbrush or a roller. Now if you're looking for more tips, advice and inspiration, join the French Heat Fan Forum on Facebook or find a stockist on the website frenchheatpaint.co.uk Thank you.